Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the Scheme N3242 uh, instrumentation lecture series. Okay, uh, so today we are going to cover one of the topic, uh, which is the uh, filters. Okay, still we are in the section of uh, signal conditioning. Okay, um, let me open up the slide for you. Okay, hold on. Instrumentation. This is a um, filter. Okay, so here we go. Again, um, I would like to recap um, the whole uh, course. Basically, our uh, lecture is very much divided into three different sections. First one is the uh, introduction, the second part is basically on the signal conditioning. And the third part is uh, the sensors and um, actuators, which is the transducers. All right. So filters is basically um, in the second uh, part, basically. All right. So so why we have the filter? Basically, we need those to eliminate unwanted noise uh, from whatever sensor or from, from whatever measurement that we are doing. Okay, in typically in any system of measurement, we are measuring, you know, some parameters or some uh, thing that we want to measure. But actually we are measuring the information together with the noise, right? So filters are very much used to make sure that we get the information and we remove the noise at the same time, okay? So um, the say here the simple filter is just consists of a single resistor and capacitor. Okay, uh, so you just need two basic components to uh, basically construct a very simple filter. All right, you just need one resistor and one capacitor. You can set uh, the values, the parameters um, according to you know what frequency and what gain that you want to you know to make sure that the, the system work with. All right. So there are basically universally there are three type of filters. Okay, you have a low pass filter, you have high pass, and you have band pass. All right. So low pass basically here we can see. All right, this is the filter response. Uh, you have diagram A, B, C. All right. So the A one, um, the A diagram is a low pass filter. B diagram is a high pass filter, and a C is a band pass filter. Okay. Please take note on each of the filter, uh, each of the response, you are seeing uh, FC over there. Okay, so FC, you are you are looking at, at uh, the FC on every single diagram, A, B. Uh, the same goes with C, but it is not uh, written there in the, in the diagram, but um, FC is basically a cut-off frequency uh, or corner frequency. So this is basically, you know, marking the turning or the cornering uh, part of the diagram, all right? So on the X, on, sorry, on the Y axis, you have the gain, VO over VI, and on the X axis, you will have the frequency, okay? Meaning that uh, the response basically will tell you in what frequency and at what gain, all right? You have, you, you, you have some reference point of frequency. On the axis, for example, um, 100 hertz, Okay, and when you go back to the y-axis, you will see what kind of gain uh, the system will give at the particular frequency, for example, 100 hertz. Okay, so FC, uh, as I mentioned before, um, just denote the corner frequency or turning point of uh, frequency where the gain is changing. All right, so go back to the to the for the response, the gain uh, line you are looking at is actually um, denote a unity gain. The straight line is unity gain, okay? 
um, when the graph starts to go down, actually the, the gain is basically re reducing uh, from one going down to the zero. Okay, so when you have uh, basically the gain is equal to one, basically you are allowing everything to pass through. If, for example, if you have like a one volts in the input, when the when the frequency is basically referred to uh, gain as one, okay, then you are passing to the one volt, right? But if you have higher frequency, for example, higher than the FC, okay, for example, here I give uh, FC is equal to 300 hertz, okay, anything below 300 hertz, anything below FC, will be passed through without any alteration. If you have one volt, the output is one volt, all right, but if you have the input signal, the frequency is more than FC, is bigger or higher than FC, in this case, it's higher than 300 hertz, for example, 500 hertz, all right? So, uh, if you have anything uh, larger than the FC, bigger than the FC, you will see the load line is uh, declining from 1 going down to 0. So, now you have attenuation to the signal, meaning that the signal is getting lower. For example, if I, give, uh, if I have input uh, signal at 1 volt, all right, and I give when I have the information at 500 hertz, the uh, uh, voltage one volt will be uh, attenuated to the level of attenuation that uh, we get at 500 hertz. For example, uh, at 500 hertz, the load line or the graph uh, will give the gain around, for example, 0 0.5. So if I give in one volt, and then my output will be 0 0.5 because it's 50%. Uh, 0.5 okay, is 50% from the the maximum amplitude so you will have half of the uh, input uh, going out in the output all right so this is the, the concept of uh, filtering you have input uh, at what frequency uh, then the, the output will be will be defined based on the this uh, response of uh, filter response all right so we have a as the low pass meaning that everything below the fc Will not be changed. Will not will not be altered. All right, and everything below the FC is having uh, the gain of one G equal to one, meaning that if you have anything on the input, you will be observing the same thing in the output. All right. So for the case of low pass filter, okay, anything below FC is will be just be will just be passed through. Anything above FC will be attenuated, you know, uh, and then. Uh, if the graph declines further to zero, then you will, you know, any frequency higher than an FC will be totally eliminated. Okay, so graph B is on the high pass, so you have FC uh, over there. Anything above FC will be passed. Okay, so for example, here FC you have 100 hertz. Everything above 100 hertz, okay, will be just passed to 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 infinity basically. And anything below FC here, anything below 100 hertz, will be suppressed, will be attenuated, will be eliminated. So frequency below the FC will not be able to pass through to the system. Okay, so you have uh, the the last response, the last graph. There is band pass filter. In this case, you are like putting a channel. You are putting a lower limit and upper limit. So anything uh, within this limit will be passed through, and anything. Uh, outside of this limit uh, will be will be eliminated will be suppressed will be um, you know will be blocked basically so for this particular graph c for the band pass filter you have uh, two cut off which is the cut off lower okay for frequency cut off lower fcl and you have the frequency cut off upper uh, fc high uh, fch basically and supposed to be located at both of the corner of the graph okay okay this is uh, the whole um, map of, of uh, filters all right so here we are talking about signal filter so you can take any signal okay it can be it can the signal here refer to any kind of information that you you, you receive uh, from your sensor okay the signal not necessarily has to be a radio signal or any other signal that you may have 
known of, but the signal here refers to the information in term of voltage and current. Okay, so voltage and currents are basically a form of signal uh, from the analog circuitries. So when you talk about this analog and uh, sorry, when when you talk about voltage and current, you are you are still referring to the uh, output from your sensors. Okay, it can be any sensor. It can be temperature, humidity, pressure, velocity, and you know many other things. So the output from these uh, transducers or from from these sensors uh, are normally noisy. So the output or this 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 output this these noises basically form of uh, voltage and current so filter is, is 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 very much necessary okay so filter is basically divided into uh, two major categories which is uh, one is the analog filter and the other one is digital for the, for the digital one uh, it is in the form of uh, programming code normally in the digital form in the computer programming form all right while for the analog filter is basically taking the circuits uh, analog circuitry uh, form. So if you want to perform digital filtering, you have to do it in either MATLAB or C or Java or any other programming language. If you want to do filtering in the analog uh, part, you are working with the circuitry, basically with the uh, op amps, operational amplifiers, with the capacitors and with the resistors, all right? So, um, um, okay, for this particular uh, courses, we are just uh, looking at the analog filter. Look at the blue one, the element type, we have active and passive. We will go through in detail. And of course, uh, not only that, you also will be looking on the other dimension of filter, basically. Uh, the frequency band or the frequency values, right? Because the information you are receiving from your sensors, you know, not only you measure in terms of voltage or current. Okay, so those voltage and current, uh, voltage and current, basically they come together with certain frequencies in it, all right? So you have voltage, current, and frequency. Those are the information that come out from your sensor all the time. Okay. So uh, for the frequency band, uh, I just explained about the low pass, high pass, band pass, you know, those are the three basic thing. And uh, low pass meaning that, meaning that there is no filter, band reject and band pass is more the same thing, it's just a complementary thing, all right. So the next slide here, we are looking at the, um, um, Lot okay. Uh, this, is, this is more or less the same thing that uh, I may have explained a couple of slides previously. We are looking at the filter uh, response, all right? Um, so you can basically see the the graph on the left on the on the y axis. You have the gain, okay, uh, which goes from zero to one. One is the maximum gain. Meaning that if the value is one, uh, the input signal will not be changed or will not be altered, will not be suppressed, will not be blocked. Okay, but when the value starts to reduce from one, going to 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, and so on, this is where the information are being cut down, are being uh, what they call that being suppressed or being blocked. But if the response, you know, goes down to the zero, this is where you know nothing will be will be allowed to pass through. So the transition uh, range between one and zero, this is where the, this is the like uh, transition uh, period where the information uh, will start to be, um, I would say reduced, all right. So this is uh, how you understand uh, when you are looking, when you, you, when you're talking about filter, basically this is the response that you are you need to go through before you can understand uh, the performance of, 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 of any filter, uh, where is the cutoff, what is the operating frequency of that particular uh, signal conditioning system. Okay. So the first one, uh, we'll be looking at the low pass filter. Basically, this is uh, look at the, the diagram, the circuit diagram you have V in. 
then in series go into a resistor and then uh, in parallel to the V in you have the capacitor going to the ground and at the junction point you have the V out so basically we are the V out is measuring the voltage drop uh, depend which depend on the impedance uh, on C on the capacitor basically so uh, the filter response uh, down there you know, below the analog circuit you have the red line okay going from um, one v out or v in one and going down to omega s all right this is the, the, the frequency the gain is uh, zero then you have omega as a cutoff and omega s as the totally suppressed uh, frequency Okay, um, to get the formula, you have V out or V in, which is the gain. So uh, V out uh, is basically uh, the voltage that we are measuring at uh, component C capacitor. So you are looking at ZC, voltage divided circuit, over ZR plus ZC. So you have uh, ZR, of course, equal to R. So if you replace everything to the formula, you will have Zc C or the impedance in C is 1 over 2 J pi um, Fc. Okay, so you can further simplify the things and finally you will get basically the V out over V in is basically 1 over 1 plus uh, 2 pi J FRC. Okay, so basically you have three things in this formula. You have uh, F, you have the R and you have the C. Okay, which will be very much defining the the gain. Okay, uh, the gain is basically the value that change from zero to one. Okay, so uh, basically for for uh, for certain frequency, you know, if you fix the value of R and C, okay, and of course if you enter any value uh, for the F you will see how much is the gain of the of the system okay in some situation you may have the gain to the maximum of, of, of one when the frequency is basically low because this is a low pass so you may assume that everything uh, below the cut of frequency is uh, the gain is one so anything above that you will have the value uh, less than one okay so you can experiment yourself change the F, uh, uh, what they call that, you may see the gain is uh, will be decreasing from 1 going down to the 0. First, you have to define the cutoff frequency by setting the R and C, okay? So this is the big diagram of the uh, low-pass filter, okay? So you have two, just two components, R and C. There is no active component, just passive R and, and C. So in this case, we are referring this one as a passive low-pass filter. Okay. So this is more or less uh, the filter response that we are talking about for the low-pass. We have to talk about this. Okay. Um, so uh, same thing here that blocks the high frequency and as uh, low frequency. Critical frequency here uh, for the cutoff is basically around 70%, 70.7% from the, the whole gain, meaning that if the gain is 1, the cutoff normally happens at 0 0.7 uh, uh, magnitude from the gain. All right, so those are also the formula. Uh, output to input uh, voltage ratio for any signal frequency, this is just the ratio. So how to basically design uh, the, the filter because when you have inputs, you know your input uh, behavior, you know the frequency, so you know the information. For example, uh, in a simple application, I have uh, sensors coming from uh, my, my, my sensor is basically a microphone which is very sensitive to, to the voice. So for example, I know my voice is uh, below 500 hertz. So anything above 500 hertz is not my voice. So I'm setting the filtering cutoff threshold is uh, to uh, 500 hertz. So I have this kind of parameter with me when I want to design a filter. Okay. 
So when I have this thing, um, this 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 parameter, you can basically um, start to find the R and C according to these uh, steps. All right. So let's say you can use any standard capacitor value from micro uh, farad to picofarad. You can take any nominal value, 0 0.1, uh, 10, uh, 20, 50, 100, and all, and so on. From there, you fix one value, and you can find the other value. Uh, you can take any nominal resistor value from 1 kilo ohm to 1 mega ohm. Okay. And then from there, you can basically... Um, uh, you know, construct your own filter. Okay, just to find the value of C and R, you are basically done. Okay, okay. Now we are looking at the passive uh, high pass filter. So um, also the circuit that shows uh, the V in C R and and V out. Please take note now the position of R and C is changing. They they switch places basically. If you compare to the low pass um, filter, okay, the rest are all the same. Uh, when you look at the filter response on the on the graph with the red color, the response is now flipping, is changing from the uh, previously low pass. They flip the other side, from the high pass they go to the other side, and now the voltage divider for the impedance. Now we are looking at the voltage drop at R. Okay, if you remember correctly the uh, for the low pass filter we are measuring the voltage drop uh, at component C capacitor for this high pass filter we are basically measuring the voltage drop in uh, in R in the resistor okay so when we do this uh, you know we have to go back to the voltage divider set we are looking at uh, the response of V out over V in, which will take you know, equal to the impedance of uh, R over the, the impedance of R plus the impedance that drop in C. Okay, so in this case, the impedance of R is equal to the R value. So we put uh, the impedance of C, you can take that value 1 over 2 pi JFC. Then V out over V in, you will have the following, uh, what they call that, formula. Okay, so this is more or less the same thing, uh, you know, you use the same concept for the low pass filter basically. Okay, so this is the, di the diagram, please take note on the position of R and C. Okay, and this is the filter response. Okay, uh, the same thing. Please take note on the formula. Okay, for this, for this, for this particular, um, for this particular passive filter, you you have to you have to basically um, you know be able to recognize the circuit, you know, the input output, the Z, and the the R and the C. Okay, and you have to uh, more or less memorize the formula to get the cutoff and the gain, right? And very basically, you are you are done. Okay, so now we are more or less finished on the passive filter. Now we are looking at the active filter. So active filter uh, actually use um, of amps, all right? So of amps uh, we have seen from 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 the previous chapters. Are taking the type and the shape of an IC chips where you have to power it up by you know power source power supply okay which is different for the case of um, passive uh, filter you are using just uh, capacitor and resistor so there is no um, there is no you know external power or anything that, that you need to, to to make sure the circuit is working that is for the passive uh, filter. For the active filter, basically you need uh, op M, and therefore you need um, power supply. And for this particular case, okay, you, you are combining amplification and filtering at the same time because you are using op M, you know, operational amplifier. For the passive, uh, for the passive uh, filter, you just can filter. You cannot amplify. Okay, meaning that. The input is one board, the output 
the maximum output can go to just one volt for the active for, for the passive filter but if you are using active filter basically you can can have input at one volt and the output can go you know more than one volt for example five volt or ten volt for example because active filter can filter and can amplify at the same time that's the good thing about active filter but um, you need an external power supply because you are using IC chips all right so this is the uh, low pass uh, active low pass filter circuit so you have op amps uh, in the middle then uh, input is on the left of the triangle output on the right you have um, uh, bypass capacitor CF and bypass resistor RF that connects the input to the output and the positive leg of the op amp is you know connected to the ground and the negative leg is going to the resistor and connected to the input all right so this is some kind of inverting type uh, active filter okay please note the position of all the components outside of the filter which is r1 cf and rf okay so you can pay attention to the circle junction in red Okay, this is uh, where you can see uh, the equation that tell I1, I2, and I3 because you have you have three things uh, coming in from there. You can refer this thing back on how to analyze the current um, direction and distri distribution of uh, of M's in the lecture. I can't remember which lecture, but they are talking about uh, of M. They're talking about op m and we made this kind of uh, we have made this kind of uh, similar kind of analysis of where the current uh, going in and out from from this circle junction okay so we have i1 i2 and i3 is equal to zero uh, you know you know this thing from the from from the previous slide and then these are the formula that, that basically govern the thing that relates between the v in and v out the idea here we want to see for any filter you want to see the gain uh, which very much depend on the frequency and uh, of course you want to see whether how, 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 how can we find the frequency and uh, all the values of RF uh, sorry um, resistor and capacitor in the filter basically the circuit all right so you have uh, here in this case V out uh, in the function of V in uh, with all the parameters of R, RF, RI, and of course uh, C, R, and also the D. All right. So uh, at high frequency, because this is uh, this is a low pass uh, active filter, that's why it is said here that high, higher frequency the capacitive reactants uh, is getting smaller. Therefore, it will basically blocks higher frequency component basically so uh, gain is very much set to be smaller okay so this is the formula of how you get the cut off frequency you are just working with the rf and cf so the r1 is not is not used here okay so your 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 d here is is basically something to do with the uh, you know, input signal frequency all right you can basically look at that okay so just now we are still in the active low pass okay the same this slide also show the same thing um basically summarize the whole um, everything you have the same circuit back right there you have cf is uh, replaced by c2 you have still have rf you have r1 in the input all right look at the orientation of the um, of m the positive and negative lake okay then you have the formula of minus 2 db cut of frequency this is at the 0 0.0701 uh, minus 3 db corner frequency this is the formula the cut off 1 over 2 pi rf c2 over there and the dc gain is uh, you know uh, explained by the formula and of, of course down there you have the, the whole uh, filter transfer function okay this more is the same thing that we have seen just now okay so you have to know the circuit 
you have to be able to use these uh, formulas to find the parameters of R1, C2, and RF in the circuit so that you get the right uh, cut off frequency. Okay. And now we move on to the high pass filter. Okay. Please also take note the changing uh, position of uh, components. Now you have C uh, is moving from the feedback loop, okay, going to the input, okay. You have RF maintain the same position, you have R1 maintain the same position, then C is now residing on the input, okay. Please also take note on the orientation of the of M, the negative and positive leg, and also uh, you, can, you can derive the whole uh, filter transfer function. Uh, from the point circle in red basically you can do the current analysis and all that so whatever you are doing basically uh, you, will, you will basically jump straight to the uh, formula of interest which is the cut of frequency okay, fc equal to 1 over 2 pi rc r1 c1 and also the the gain the the total system uh, gain, which is in this case, uh, you have the last one G R F over R one, so that's uh, all matters when you have your frequency is uh, this is more or less way bigger than your your cut off. All right, so this is something to to do with the position of the frequency where you are using uh, uh, frequency of interest uh, of 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 you know system that you are using basically okay so this slide basically summarizes everything about the high pass right the circuit the important formula okay, that you need to know for you in, in, in order for you to design a high pass um, active filter okay so this is the band pass the last type okay take note on the feedback loop you have cf and rf also on the input loop, you have C1 and R1. For the bandpass filter, for example, in the Cassier filter, okay, we were we were talking about low pass and high pass. And for the bandpass, basically, you just have to cascade these two things. So you do the first, you you, you do first uh, the bandpass, uh, sorry, the low pass, and followed by the high pass. So if you combine those, if you cascade those, we are having a passive bandpass filter. Okay. In this case, we are looking at the bandpass filter for uh, active filter using op -amp. You don't have to do uh, cascading filter, you, or you don't have to combine low low pass and high pass circuit for the passive filter. For the active filter, you just play around with the position with the uh, C and F components and where you position. Okay, so you have seen just now when we uh, change the position of C and uh, are here we are having a different kind of um, filter okay, in this case you change this, this thing again you are having a bandpass filter so here you have uh, much more formula I will not go through to the detail of the current analysis but what we are interested here is the uh, in the frequency cut of one uh, please take note on the which R and which C uh, are used in calculating the cut of one now look at the FC2, uh, you have RF and CF uh, being used basically, and the gain, all right? So for any filter design, we are very much interested to find um, the value of the component C and F, okay? Um, with the prior information of the cutoff, which we know basically, okay? As I mentioned earlier, when you design a filter, you need to have some information of what frequency you want to filter this thing whether uh, below or higher the frequency or in the middle of you know the system so from there from the frequency information that you have you can you know use the formula to find the r and the and the c okay, and how to find it uh, you have to scroll back to the uh, previous slide step by step you set the c you set the r and then everything is, is okay so the most important thing for any filter circuit is the gain and the frequency okay so that's uh, very much the end of uh, lecture six which cover um, 
a little bit about uh, filter okay so uh, that's all for now um, I'll see you again in the next uh, lecture